Hello, Chris Walker with Big Angie Fan Channel. Back here in beautiful Hawaii after my trip to the Philippines. As always, until my um, dispute with YouTube about demonetization, uh, this is going to be published on my other channel, Hawaii Walkers, for now. But letting you know very soon, probably before Angelina's EP comes out, I'm going to be going back to all Big Angie Fan. I don't want any confusion. This is however it turns out with my dispute. By judging by what they've been doing so far, how they've been responding to me so far at YouTube, it looks pretty unlikely that I'll be demonetized. So, um, and that's okay, but that also means I'm going to be focusing more on my Patreon as a way of uh, paying the bills a bit and uh, keeping my wife happy. She's felt a, bit, a little bit of like an Angelina Jordan widow. You know, we talk about surfing widows here in Hawaii because her husband is, you know, going surfing all the time. And uh, there's a little bit of that with my wife. And I would certainly make her happier if I could be uh, bringing in a little bit, you know, just to, to compensate me for all the time I spend doing this. But anyway, so... Um, Yes, so I'm revamping the Patreon. I've added a, a new tier to it where you can get um, extra stuff. And right now there's uh, 36 um, posts on my Patreon that you won't find anywhere else. So that's a reason to jump on there. You can get access to all of those right now at the lowest tier, which is as low as $1. And the new tier is going to have behind the scenes stuff, requests, uh, longer form videos. All right, so I'm going to do a deep dive here. Now, yeah, see, here's some of the uh, exclusive things I have here. But I'm going to do a deep dive into the Love Don't Let Me Go vocals here using a, an a cappella video I made exclusively for my Patreon. The, um, you know, people talk a lot about the catchy beat, and it does have a very catchy beat, but, uh, you know, which is great, but I think people haven't given the vocals the appreciation they deserve. They're really, uh, they're really unique, even for Angelina Jordan, you know, a different sound. And I'll talk a little bit about the actual lyrics, too, but let's, let's get into this. Mistakes and regrets Ain't all that I have left It's your touch and your sense Still on my skin Now, first of all, uh, people have been talking about uh, her sounding like Amy Winehouse. She doesn't really, sometimes she can sound quite a bit like Amy Winehouse. You know, she pays tribute when she does Amy Winehouse songs. And she can sound quite a bit like her, but on this one, I don't think she sounds very much like Amy Winehouse at all. There's that very rich throatiness here. We've got the lower register, but also notice how at the beginning, at the ending of some words, but not all of them, there's kind of this catch at the end, which is something that I haven't heard her do much before, and it's really an interesting effect. <clears throat> Mistakes and regrets <laughs> Ain't all that I have left It's your touch and your sense Still on my skin Maybe I'm a fool To erase the trace of you Cause now you know me at least that's how I feel. Well, especially there when she said, I feel, that was one where she kind of extended out the word with a catch at the end. And it really adds emotion in a sense that it, in some ways it feels like, you know, she's about to start crying or something. Of course, you'll notice that this isn't the same as the original video because I've used um, clips from her TikTok to vary this more because, you know, we don't have the instrumentation. So here she's especially looking like a supermodel. This one was on her TikTok, but quickly removed, but somebody put it on YouTube. Of course, uh, links to all of this will be provided. I'm trying to pull you close, closer to me, but it's just like trying to catch small. Love, I really wish you had a face 
Maybe I could beg for you to stay. And then I love here how she switched, you know, pretty much following the same style up until there. But then that word you is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of sensual. You can really feel the pleading there. Let's go back a little bit. For you to stay out of pace. Maybe I could beg for you to stay. I'm on the floor. I'm begging. You know, oh, oh. Now, um, that oh, 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 it's an example of how she um, can like individualize each little O there and have them be separate words instead of kind of like in the Philippines, I was getting my um, my nieces in law, you know, my the the daughters of my wife's brothers and sisters there. They there were I was having them get ready to do a karaoke version of of this song. And uh, we didn't have time to finish it before I left, but they promised they're going to send me a tape. But in that, in what they did, they got the chorus down pretty good. But I always noticed when they did the the o o o part, it's just kind of like how you and I would say it, you know, o o o. Kind of each word sounds the same, and they flow into each other. But listen to the way that Angelina Jordan gives. She just has such individuality that she can give to every word. Okay, maybe back a little bit more. And I just, I remembered when they were singing along with it, so you could hear both Angelina Jordan's voice and their voice, how, you know, they were singing it well, but it's just, uh, she has such a distinctive voice. And that's a good example of that o o o part. If only I could look you in the eye, there wouldn't be no place for and there she leaps up to place without any effort at all. That's another thing about Angelina Jordan is the control. You know, she's not about fireworks. You know, Dimash, for example, can certainly outdo her in going from super high pitch to super low pitch. There's other singers who are more, have more powerful, strong voices like, like uh, Whitney Houston and probably Christina Aguilera. But it's the subtleties that she has and the way that she can control those and do exactly what she wants. There's all these little details. That's why um, that's one thing a lot of commenters have talked about, how you can go back to the song over and over again and it doesn't get old because you're always finding these new little things that she does. And uh, she does it with such control. So that's why I always say to people, you know, don't judge Angelina Jordan until you really listened with no distractions and with a good pair of headphones. Let's go back some more. I'll try and let it go for quite a while now without responding, without uh, interrupting. Okay. If only I could look you in the eye, there wouldn't be no place for you. Okay, well, I do have to say something here. You notice how one, one, uh, the chorus blended right into the next verse. You know, she actually started the next verse before ending the chorus. And I think the conventional thing in pop songs is you'd want some kind of bridge there you'd, you'd want like a, a space of no singing with just the instrumentation especially with this like really catchy beat that she has and so I kind of feel like I'm wanting of course this is a cappella, but in the version with the instruments it's the same thing the, the, the two the verse and the chorus overlap but although we may think you know by pop conventions that we'd like to see that bridge I think this is very definitely a deliberate choice with hers because she did exactly the same thing with her other kind of poppy jazz modern song, um, Seventh Heaven. There's a part where one verse and you know, the chorus ends and a verse begins where you would expect there to be some kind of musical break, but she just goes right into the next one. And, you know, uh, I'm interested in what her artistic reasoning is in that. Um, you know, because I would like to have a little bit of a break there. That's the one criticism that I would have of this song is 
I would like a little bit more dynamics, a little bit more changes in it. That's why I'm thinking of doing a like an extended jam version of it for my Patreon. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a choice of hers to just jump right in from the chorus to the verse. If you had a heart, I could make it be for me. If you had a soul, I know where your heart would be. Beautifully Thought extended. about feeling lonely, but man, I just can't forget. And though you're not here beside me. Okay, remember I said this is kind of a deep dive. Okay, so it's not about feeling lonely. There's two different written down lyrics we have. We have the official lyric video and then we have like a TikTok with another version where it's um, it's not about feeling lonely. It's either the man I can't forget or but man I can't forget. And it's the kind of thing where you kind of hear what you're expecting to hear. So if you hear the, the lyric, if you see the lyric written down, the man, it sounds like that. But if you see the lyric, um, but man, it sounds like that. I've tried to slow this down and look, listen really carefully. And, you know, if I had to swear to it, I would say it's the man. But anyway, I'm going to say the man rather than but man, because I think that's a much more sophisticated lyric. You know, she's talking about love not for a not in a romantic sense of some man that she's missing so it's not about feeling lonely the man i just can't forget if you have it it's not about feeling lonely but man i just can't forget that's kind of um taking away from the f from the first thing she said so it sounds like well yeah but it is kind of like you know missing somebody but i think this kind of reinforces it no this is not about feeling lonely it's not about a man i forget can't forget and of course the next line brilliantly talks about how it's this feeling of love that, you know, even though it's not, she doesn't have a strong feeling of love, maybe right as she's singing the song, she can still see its silhouette. I love that line, although you're not here beside me, I can still feel your silhouette, see your silhouette, and listen to the way she sings the word silhouette. Okay, let's see if I can get through the rest of this with no more interruptions. I'll be it's not about feeling lonely, but man, I just can't forget. And though you're not here beside me, I still see your silhouette. I'm trying to pull you close, closer to me, but it's just like trying to catch small. Love, I really wish you had a face. Maybe I could beg for you to stay. I'm on the floor, I'm begging, oh, oh, oh. Love, don't let me go. If only I could look you in the eye, there wouldn't be no place for I'm on the floor, I'm begging, oh, 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 love, don't let me go. I'm on the floor, I'm begging, oh, 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 love, don't let me go. Just uh, brilliant vocals, you know, the uh, the catchy beat kind of... I do think the song, you know, needs to have this instrumentation backing. Uh, you know, certainly if it was to be commercially successful, it shouldn't be an a cappella song. And, uh, you know, that, that catchy beat does add to it. But if you just listen to those those vocals, it is some of her most distinct vocals ever. I've never had heard her have that much throatiness in it. In, in her vocals and uh, the way she kind of changes up the way she sings certain things. Um, the word you in beg for you to say is sung so beautifully, beg for you. And it's more of a, more of a smooth, sensual sound than the others that have all of those breaks at the end of the, uh, end of the words. Just, she's just a brilliant vocal stylist. So all of those variations, the fact that it's so throaty the fact that um, she uses a lot of uh, breathiness and changing up of her phrasing makes it sound not very much at all like Amy Winehouse to me. Uh, well, Amy Winehouse certainly did some jazzy phrasing, but uh, you know, 
I think not to the extent of how she is changing it up here. Um, she certainly, like I said before, she can certainly sound a lot like Amy Winehouse on certain songs, but I don't think she sounds much at all like her on this one. The, uh, <coughs> you know, I think it's a compliment to compare her to Amy Winehouse because Amy Winehouse is a great singer, but um, this is definitely Angelina Jordan. Uh, one more thing about the lyrics is that, yes, there's more interpretations than one. You know, I think it's a song to love itself, but you could also talk about the kind of bond between between uh, Grandma Mary and Angelina Jordan. You know, the fact that she did choose to have her in the car with her in, in this video. And, um, you know, it's not about feeling only the man I can't forget. Well, it could be this person I can't forget, you know. But, you know, love, I really wish you had a face. And uh, if I could only look you in the eye. So that to me is not talking to a, to a specific person. Um, but anyway, that's a sign of really of sophistication in lyrics when people can interpret it in so many different ways. So yes, I just felt the need to really dive into that. So now after this, go out and give Love Don't Let Me Go another listen on her official channel. Buy it. You know, do what you can to support her. I can just barely wait for the EP to come up. All right, Chris Walker with Big Angie Fan Channel here in beautiful Hawaii. Aloha.